So we're going to talk about diabetes, particularly type 2 diabetes. Okay. And uh, so my first question, when you hear the word diabetes, what does it make you think of? Oh, I think about it. To me, it's like a disease, it's an illness that you have to learn to live with. Okay. And you said you don't have diabetes? My husband does. He does. All right. And how long has he had? Uh, about three years. Three years. How's he doing? He's doing great. Is he? How you doing? I am now. Uh, there have been some times that I had quite a scare because my husband's the type that don't like to eat right. Mm. Uh, he was used to eating up breakfast, probably go all day without eating just before the diabetes. And after, it was hard to change that. Mm -hmm. And so no matter how I say, now you got to eat lunch, you got to eat a certain time. Mm -hmm. And he would ignore that, mm -hmm. and to the point to whenever he started feeling faint, and he know that sugar is low, mm -hmm. then he rushed in looking for something to eat and something to drink. But now he's much better, and our eating habits have changed. We learn to eat better, and he lost weight. And while well, I went to Weight Watchers to lose weight and start eating right. And now it's much better, much better on control. Now mm -hmm. it's mostly numb most of the time. Mm -hmm. But he's at a point where at one time it was a high, it was a low. Mm -hmm. And some of that was from not eating right. Mm -hmm. And he's the type of person that liked to be busy working mm -hmm. and not eating right. That didn't help him. Mm -hmm. But now that he's eating better, um, it used to be that there were certain things he didn't want to eat, mm -hmm. but now he'll eat his fruit and vegetable and stuff. So he's doing much better. So and he lost about fifteen I, I noticed pounds. How much? About fifteen pounds. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. So yes. I noticed as you were telling the story, you you kept saying we. Yes. All right. So it, it sounds like you're very much the support for him. Yes. And some of the changes he needed to make, you made too. I made too. Yes, I'm eating different too. And how do you feel about that? I feel good because I, f I feel better. Uh -huh. After eating better, you know, they say it is you are what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now that I'm eating better, I feel better. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. I have um, energy. And at 73, I don't think I do too bad, you know. 73? Yes. I think you're doing wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's wonderful. Um, and and uh, has was diabetes in his family? Uh, his dad. Okay. Yes. And what about your side of the family? Okay. All of my siblings. Really? Yes. Um, from my father's side. And I was. It was two of us that didn't have it so far. So. Your husband's change need to change, and your changing with him may have saved me. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, that's a wonderful because thing. Because I was looking at, I felt like I was getting to be a candidate because of my age and my weight. Uh huh. That to me that was a good candidate for diabetes. So I had to change my way of doing things too. And so have you cut your weight just a little bit too? 15.6. Was this a competition between you and your husband? No, I'm, I'm going to Weight Watchers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so you're he, keeping track. He was losing weight before I started Weight Watchers. Uh -huh. you know, so it just continues. And, and exercising more. We exercise more. Uh, most of the time we walk like two miles. Since it's been hot, mm -hmm. I haven't been walking, but I have exercises, machine mm -hmm. exercise. So, uh, tell me about walking. Where do you walk at? Oh, we walk around in back of the house. We have uh, we live in a rural area, mm -hmm. so there's plenty of walking room. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be worried about the traffic. So, so you walk on the street? Yes. Right on the highway? Yes. You don't have to worry about the cars. Don't have to worry about the cars. All right, that's wonderful. Because mostly neighbors around us. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Um, what do you think causes diabetes? I really don't know. I've I've had different things told to me. 
um, mostly obese and eating the wrong thing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. too much sugars, uh, carbohydrate with custard and sugar, mm -hmm. this type of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. When uh, your husband was diagnosed with diabetes, did, did he get some education about what he needed to do and how to take care of himself? Yes, the doctor sent him to. I sent him to as a diabetic thing down in Meridian. Mm -hmm. He went to. Did to you go? Yes. To, to explain uh -huh. how he was supposed to eat and what he was not supposed to eat uh -huh. and how he was to exercise. So right. It's been good because when you do it together, it's not near as hard. So, so that support's important. The support system, yes. Very important. Now, do you have other supports? Besides, oh, no, not it? really, not really. So it's basically you and him. Yes. You have children or? But no, I don't have any children. Okay. Yeah. But you got neighbors and yes. friends yes. and church friends. Yeah. Well, fr a friend of mine was diabetic too. And, uh huh. Yeah. So I learned a lot of things from her. When he, so that was yeah. Okay, that's excellent. So, what do you think the most important thing is that a person needs to do to manage their diabetes? Well, the most important thing to me is that you have to eat the right thing, eat the right amount, and exercise is very important, mm -hmm. and keep your weight down. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the basic thing mm -hmm. that really helps. Mm -hmm. And to keep it monitored too, you know. Uh, you have to keep it checked, let's see. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, uh, newspaper says that Mississippi is the fattest state. Well, that's what they say. They say Mississippi is the most obese that I've seen in the last six years, I mm -hmm. think. Yes. Do you think that's true? It could be. It could be. Do you see? You know, we, we eat, I won't say healthy in Mississippi, but we eat a lot of I guess, food that we shouldn't be eating. And you think we eat, eat the best because we're in the country where we raise vegetables. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of fresh vegetables. So it's all in, in uh, the individual, mm -hmm. how you want to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, I think years ago we was trained to eat a lot of stuff that, okay, sodium for instance. You know, years ago they used to use a lot of salt and stuff like that, which you don't have to have. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you, and so I think that's a lot of reason. When um, when you were young, yes, what was it, what was uh, what did you grow up eating? Uh, fresh vegetables out of the garden, but they were seasoned highly. Mm -hmm. See, and so it, that's a hard habit to break when you get accustomed to. But now, when you learn better, you do better. I learned that it didn't take all of this to mm -hmm. have a decent meal. Mm -hmm. So now I don't use all this sodium and stuff like that. And uh, what about the activity? What kind of activity did you have when you were young? Oh, when I was young, we was doing jumping rope and uh, little riding horses and little everything, you know. We had, uh, the basic, we was more active, excuse me, mm -hmm. we was more active than children are now. Sit around and play games now. And, but we didn't have the problems with the obesity we did now. Mm -hmm. Even though we was eating a lot of stuff we shouldn't have been eating, but we was very active. Mm -hmm. And we all had chores to do. Children now don't have chores to mm -hmm. sit around and play games so all what day. Was, what was your chores? Well, in the beginning, uh, it was like doing the dishes, mm -hmm. uh, sweeping the floors, things like that. And then you get older, you advance to other things, washing, ironing. All that type of thing. Working. And we didn't have the electric as we have now. That was the right. It wasn't the electric, right? And, and the washing machine wasn't the washing machine oh, no, like now. It was in the, what, in the washboard or whatever you call the thing, yes. So we got plenty of exercise. You had to heat the water? Heat the water, yes. That was really you had different. To carry the water too. We didn't have the faucet turn on and off like we do now. Mm -hmm. So we have really advanced, but. I think it's made a lot of us lazy too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember when you got electricity? Not really. Okay. It's been so many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes people remember certain things, you know. Yeah, I've been trying to remember the, uh, really about that. 
I was born in Mississippi, but I left Mississippi when I was 17. And I'm trying to remember, we must have had lectures before I left because I remember having a radio, I guess it ran by electricity, mm -hmm. before I left. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have the telephones and things before I left. Is that right? Yeah. So do you have a cell phone today? I have a cell phone today. <laughs> but that cell phone is just like, just for emergency. I'm not a... You're not I'm, texting? I'm not, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm not a cell phone person. <laughs> it's I, a, I wear it out in my purse. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a real different, though, from what telephone oh, used yes. to be like, didn't it? Yeah. Very much different. Do you have one of those phones where you had party line? Oh yes. You definitely. pick it up and there'd be somebody else talking yes. and you have to wait or sometimes you couldn't hardly get the phone. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's hard young people wouldn't understand what that is today. Oh, no, everything is <laughs> everything is instant now. Mm -hmm. Push away there it is. Mm -hmm. So now you said you, you uh, left Mississippi when you were 17? Oh yes. And where'd you go? Washington DC. Oh my, that was a big difference, wasn't it? Oh yes, I went to Washington D.C. and I went to work for a congressman. Uh, you're probably too young to remember. His name was Tommy G. Abernathy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when Eisenhower was in president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got to serve Mrs. Eisenhower. Well. Yes. Wow. Yes. Oh, that was a treat. She was a nice lady. Very nice. Uh, the lady I worked for. They belongs to a congressional club, uh -huh. so they was all over the house for lunch. She was very sweet, very sweet. And so, um, how long did you stay in Washington? Well, about a year. Uh huh. Cause I didn't have any relatives there, and my mother had just passed away. Mm -hmm. And so, my oldest sister was in Prairie, Michigan, so I moved there, and I stayed there until night four. Mm -hmm. We moved back to Mississippi. Well, what made you come back? Well, my husband was from Preston, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and I like the country. Mm -hmm. I just got stuck in Michigan, <laughs> <laughs> but I knew one day I would return. Uh huh. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. So I've enjoyed every minute of it. And and was uh, Kemper County where you were from, where you grew up? No, I was from Chickasaw County. Chickasaw, okay. Around Oklahoma. Okay. Near Tupelo. And and so how did you, how come you to pick this county to move? Because back? my husband was from here. Aha! That solves <laughs> the problem, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. He was from here. Yeah. Oh, that's how. So how? No, now I'm now I'm getting into now business. Getting personal, right? Now I'm getting personal. <laughs> yeah. Because okay. how is it that uh, if you were up in Michigan and he's down here in Kemper that how did you all get together? Well, he didn't always live here. He left here and moved to Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And so his father lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, okay. So he left Omaha, Nebraska, came to Grand Rapids. I met him in Grand Rapids. So you were neighbors here, never knew each other, and then wound up? A hundred miles away, <laughs> never knew each other. And, and then wound up in Michigan and met. That's right. And here you are back here. Here we are back. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. <laughs> Small world. Uh, well, we never know uh, where life is going to take us. That's through. right. Yeah. That's true. So what have you found since you came back to Mississippi? I mean, this is um, a pretty different here than Grand Rapids, Michigan, or certainly Washington, D.C. Yes, uh, here I found peace, quiet. I wouldn't take anything for that. You know, in the city it's noisy and very crowded. Mm -hmm. But here, out in the country, got all the peace and quiet, you know. So, and you get to know your neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I have some nice neighbors, very mm -hmm. nice neighbors. And um, uh, how involved are you in the community? Very, very. Uh, I belong to Mount Salem Baptist Church and I do a lot of outreach programs. Uh, we have uh, three or four churches now combined together. We have like outreach since the tornado that we have mm -hmm. things stocked that we serve. And I'm very busy visiting the elder. I cook, mm -hmm. take food to them. But I like that type of thing. See, when I was working, I didn't have a chance to do all that. Right. Now that I'm retired, and right. I'm very busy. 
uh, I belong to the district, the uh, Cherry Unit, Unit Spring District, mm -hmm. and I do a lot of district work, and so I'm very involved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, so one of the things that I that I've been wondering about and talking with some folks about is um, how do we help the community, the people in the community, learn more about taking care of themselves to prevent disease, to prevent diabetes prevent other diseases as well by living healthier? Well, one thing that they have did in my community, the different churches have the like health programs mm -hmm. and they have nurses and different ones that come out and talk and enlighten people on how to take care of themselves, mm -hmm. you know, physical, mentally, so it's been very helpful. And how often does that happen? Oh, probably once a year or something like okay. that. Okay. Yes. You think um, folks in your church or area would be interested in having more? Have that happen more than once a year? It might. Right. If it was on different topics. Different maybe. topics, yeah, because we need to follow young people. Mm -hmm. They need to learn young how to uh, take care of themselves, mm -hmm. the physical bodies, you know, because as they say that we are the most obese state it is. So our kids need to train. You know, a lot of our children, uh, parents, are young parents. Mm -hmm. And they haven't learned how to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So how are they going to teach the children? Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. So it makes a difference. It definitely, definitely yes, does. It does. Um, how, how do you think, um, <clears throat> How do you think we get more involved with the church? So I'm a nurse. Okay. Right? That's what my occupation would be, and I've actually taught nursing for, okay. a, for a few years. And um, and I'm an outsider. I don't live here. I'm, okay. All right. I'm a visitor, okay. um, so to speak. And uh, but yet we're working with the Diabetes Coalition here, who are people from Camper County. Yes. And. Um, and we're really concerned because the problem with diabetes is getting worse. Yes, it is. And if we don't change things, they're saying one in two people may have diabetes. And that's that's 50% of us, and that's a lot of people. So we need to figure out now, before that happens, yes. what we can do to prevent that. Yes. And so it seems like the churches is a, would be a good it, way. Yes. Yes. And I'd be real interested to know any ideas you might have about how we could make that happen. Well, the only thing I know, uh, if we would uh, contact different churches and have them meet at one location mm -hmm. and get people to come and be trained that way, that would be one good way of doing it. Do mm -hmm. you think people would be willing to, to do that? I would, I would think so. I most certainly hope so. Just have to convince the pastors that it would be a good idea. I don't think we have a problem uh, convincing the pastors. I, I don't think that would be a problem mm -hmm. because I'm sure they understand that this is something that is much needed. You know, one thing that uh, Jesus said, uh, he was uh, not only spiritual but physical too, mm -hmm. to take care of the whole man. Mm -hmm. So this spiritual isn't enough. You got to have the physical along with it, because mm -hmm. you can be spiritual and not have the physical. You're not going to be able to do what you need to do. Absolutely, it all works together. I couldn't say that any better. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, I think that that's what we, the kind of message we have to get out. Yes. And sometimes people think they just go to church for the spiritual. The spiritual side, but that's not true. That it yeah. really is the whole the person. Whole person, yes. Yeah. And as you say, I, I really realized that more and more people are sick. As I said, all of my siblings had that. And I had like three, four to go on dialysis before they die. Mm. And my sister that's younger than I am is a diabetic. Mm -hmm. And um, I called her Sunday night as I got home. And she said, Geneva, uh, tell John to make sure he watches sugar. Right? She had had a bad attack and had to go to the hospital. Mm. See, but she's also on dialysis. Mm -hmm. See, so I know how dangerous it is. That's right. That's right. 
and and we want to prevent that from happening yes. you know for as many people as we possibly can know. you have any other ideas about how to how to reach the community with this good good health message well the only other thing that I know is I said if we set up workshops get out flyers that are appetizing you know try to bring mm -hmm. in as many people as we can and then we can always uh, talk about it in our churches too mm -hmm. you know we can always talk about it mm -hmm. and try to get other people involved mm -hmm. because the more involved you get the more people you get the more a spread you're gonna get you know you know you can take uh, yeah, the way the Bible say one can put one, one thousand, two can put ten thousand. Mm -hmm. So the more we multiply, mm -hmm. the more people they reach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you're not involved in the diabetes coalition here. No, I'm not. Have you thought about it? I just found out about it the other day. Okay, well, good. <laughs> I'm glad you found out about it uh, because it sounds like they could use your help, and it yeah, would be. Uh, uh, maybe an interesting group for you to be a part of as well. Could be. Uh, and, the, and your husband, you know, your yes. husband could also be part of it. They're uh, really wanting to grow the coalition and to make it stronger yeah. uh, because there is strength in numbers. It is. You know, it and uh, uh, often when people come together for the good of the bigger community, they also find out it helps them too. Right, that's you know? right. And it gives you a chance to connect with other people that have similar problems and, and can it work helps. together. It really helps more involved uh, when you work together on the same same course. It brings things in place. I I learned since I've been going to uh, Weight Weight Watchers. Uh, there are things that I would do probably eating something wrong. I don't dare to do anymore mm -hmm. because I'm conscious of. Okay, it's like I'm held accountable mm -hmm. now. Now you know. And I know. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you learn better, you do. Uh -huh. yeah, so it has helped me tremendously uh -huh. do that. Yeah. And what inspired you to go to Weight Watchers? A friend of mine was going, and she kept talking about it, and she asked me about going, and I said, "Oh, you know." And I began to think about it, and I said, well, you know, I really need to lose the weight, you know. And I said, well, I'm going to try. And when I went, I, that was it. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. And I, I tell you what happened one day. I had been to some church meeting one Saturday, and I was hungry. <laughs> so I came by, back by the store to pick up some things, and I said, I'm going to get this pack out of nabs. I'm going to eat it on the way home. I am so hungry. When I place it on the counter, when the Weight Watch is behind me, I didn't know, and she says, well, how many points is that? <laughs> <laughs> I says, I don't know. And I don't have my glasses. How many calories? She looked at it. It's 130 calories. I said, yeah. I said, oh, well, I'll take it home and give it to my nephew. So I threw it in my purse. And I forgot about it. So I went to church that Sunday, I still had the same verse, I still in the verse. And the kids had two paper over there, and I asked the one boy, will you pick that paper up? And he did. So then it came to me, I had this pack of nails, so I gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> but when you got to give him a, a counter, it makes a difference. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because I've seen a time that, the time I met on Weight Watchers, I, you know, at that time I started dying. We're right back. Mm -hmm. But this time I'm planning on staying here. This is working for you? Yeah, it's working. Good. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah, it is. Um, you're not involved probably um, with anything with schools or workplaces, are you, at the current time? Right now I am sitting with a patient. Oh, are you? Yes. I just left there and came here. Okay. And uh, is this with a uh, a senior center? Yes. Or no, no, in a private home. A private home? Yes. Okay. And the person's ill and you're just yes. sort of being there with them. So is this like a part-time job or is this volunteer work? Or? Right now it's a full-time job. Is that right? <laughs> I work from 7 to 3. 
How many days a week? Five. Well, yeah, that's a full-time job. How did you uh, happen to do that? Well, years ago when I moved here, there was an elder lady that had a sick husband. Mm -hmm. And she was looking for someone to help them, so I did until I worked for them to both of them passed away. And the man I'm sitting with now, it was his sister. Mm -hmm. So when his daughter needed some help, they thought of me. And they knew you from the Yes, because I had been sitting with a couple of ladies since then, and I said, my husband, well, this is it, you know. When I finished those two ladies, this is it, I'm not working anymore. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh yeah, but he know me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm busy. I, I got to be busy. Sitting around the house is not my thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Plus I have a lot of work at home to do. I have a husband. So I have a nephew there with me too. And so I got two men to take care of. That keep you busy. I'll keep you busy, that's for yes. sure. And they'll let you take care of them too. Keep you busy. <laughs> then I have my church work. And then I, I go visit the elders of the church. And right now we have one lady that's sick. And I'm mm -hmm. visiting her and so forth. But I like staying busy. All right, so so you told me you're 73. Yes. And so people would say you're a senior citizen. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Been and, that a long time. <laughs> but it sounds to me like even as a senior citizen, you're not sitting and not rocking on the front porch. My my sister tells me all the time, she says, I don't know how you do it. I've been active all my life, you know. Mm -hmm. A person that's active, so have my husband. You just can't go and sit. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a lot more um, people in the community like you who are older? There are some, yeah. And still, still really active? Still active. Do you think there's any way we could get more senior citizens who are well and healthy and active into teaching and talking about health promotion in some ways. Well, that would be something to think about. Mm -hmm. And that would be a good thing. Are there activities uh, through the Senior Center here for folks? They have here? a uh, Senior Center here, but I haven't been to it yet. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> well, you're not old enough. <laughs> I've been too busy. <laughs> You're too busy and they're not quite old enough yet. <laughs> I'm old enough. I've been old enough. But as long as I can get around and do things, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I like I like helping people. I like being around people. Mm -hmm. yeah, and having you. having good health yeah. makes it better, it doesn't it? Makes it different, yes. You're able to do more, go more. Mm -hmm. I have long hours sometimes, but it keeps me going. That's a good thing. Yes. That's a good thing. I like it. I think that's all the questions I have. Is there anything else you want to share about diabetes or taking good care of oneself? No, the only thing I can say that you've got to know what to eat, how to fix it, and when to be, um, a lot of times we are eating the wrong thing. And that's not going to work with diabetes. I found that out. That's not going to work. I, it's, I knew that all the time, but my husband had to find it out. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. There's a couple of times that he's just been almost out of it. So now I don't have as much problem getting him to eat mm -hmm. on time like mm -hmm. he should, you know. So. He had one terrible scale once, and I think that woke him up. Mm. He likes to fish. Mm. So he's out in the lake fishing by himself, and he said he began to feel faint, and he had taken something, whatever. But he started the motor up to go to the bank, and he passed out. And when he came to it, he was in the boat, and his leg was up on his the thing that controlled the motor, and it was going around and around. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, you were blessed. Mm -hmm. Because she could have been going farther right into the bank. Mm -hmm. You know. So I think they kind of <laughs> got <his> attention. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sometimes it takes staying to wake us up. But it, it does. I think that uh -huh. did. It. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I told him he was blessed, you know, because it could have gone the other way. Yes. He was blessed.